What's up, guys? What's up, everybody? This is welcome back to the content corner. This is your boy Heb. That was a long pause. <laughs> you gotta build the suspense, you know. I feel you. I feel you. What's up, everybody? It's Lens. <laughs> now, this week, first off, I want to apologize for last week uh, due to technical difficulties, aka one of our computers exploded. We won't tell you whose. Uh, we <laughs> couldn't release a video, a video, so we do want to apologize for that. Um, and I want to apologize for last week for getting to stream Ghost of Tsushima on Tuesday for Tsushima Tuesdays. I was deep in schoolwork <laughs> that night. Like I got out of class, and I was just like, I gotta finish this tonight. <laughs> it is. It is what it is. Yeah. So, but we're here for you. And uh, this week, talking another movie that came out this year. I, it's on Netflix. It's on Netflix, so you can watch it whenever you want. Um, Although I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> no, no, nah. There are better things to watch. You could. I would rather. Yeah, yeah. You, you, I'd you ra would rather what? <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather watch Alien Resurrection again. Oof. That's 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 an insult. <laughs> <laughs> Cuz at least there's a cool alien in the movie at that point. That's true. But you know what? That's why we're here, you know. We we take these shots for you. We we're diving in. We watch the bad movies and the good so you don't have to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, honestly, it's just trying to save you time, you know. So to you know, get right into it. The name of this movie is The Last Days of American Crime. I'm sure you've heard of it and or seen it on Netflix. Yeah, I was I was uh, kind of interested in this movie because like, I, I remember I saw a commercial for it, uh, I think pre-quarantine, I feel like a trailer or something. Yeah. So the whole concept is that the government came up with a signal that when transmitted uh prevents anyone who hears it from committing crime like it it affects the brain and it it like stops you from committing anything that you know is unlawful which i want to point out it's not even hearing remember it's just like it's at a high frequency that you won't hear but yeah, your you won't brain hear it but feels yeah. it <laughs> it's just oh my mind is melting you know that kind of thing so with this happening um and this about to go into effect uh this guy's like yo and it, this is all the trailer he's like yo i want to like commit the last great like crime that like in america because after this it's going to be impossible so i was just like yo the 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 premise oh my god like you gotta fight a system that's about to like fry your brains and you're gonna commit the greatest crime in American history. I am all about it. Cause so the commercial made it seem like it was just some dude, like obviously a, a criminal, but he that he was just like, if I can't fight this thing, I'm gonna go down with a legacy. <laughs> Word. I was I was I was about it, you know, because that's interesting. But but that's not really what it's about. I mean, it kind of is. But Hold it's on. Just... It's not the main character's legacy that or idea. That's true. I thought it was going to be the main character saying, like, all right, I'm going out with a bang. But it's really some third party dude who's using the main character and his skill set. To go out with a bang. His unique set of skills. <laughs> um, so the main character, I forgot his name because it's unimportant because you don't need to watch this movie. But <laughs> the main character, he is the head of uh, like his like crime unit, <laughs> I guess you would call it. <laughs> you know, uh, like, his squad. They, his squad. You know, he's the leader of his squad. You know, they go, they come to him for the plans and he like sets up everything. Uh, his brother, 
had to go to jail for like six months because of something. And uh, while his brother's in jail, he gets killed. Or he he gets a letter saying that his brother committed suicide. So he's tight. Um, yep. And then the other guy who wants to commit the heist, he comes out of nowhere. He's like, yo, your brother didn't commit suicide. And he's like, what? Yeah, he got killed by like the guards. And he was like, son of a bitch. So do you want revenge? What do you mean? Well, here's how we get revenge. We rob the system. <laughs> like before everything goes down, we commit, we like take a, like all of the money. And I, I think he w- he was like, oh, you ha- can you help me steal $30 million? That's what, that's, that was the original goal. Yes. Yes. So somehow along the way, the guy's like, all right, $30 million. I see the plan. I see what you're talking about. I'm going to like, make a better plan and we're making a new goal. We're going to steal $1 billion. Yep. A billion dollars. Yes. You heard me right. One followed by nine zeros. (laughs) Now I want to add that you may think, what's the point of stealing so much money? If the signal is going to make it. So, you know, it's illegal. Once the signal goes live, mind you that, they also say any money that you have stolen. So the government's offered an amnesty for like mostly white collar criminals, you know, in money laundering. That if there's money that they laundered that's illegal, um, and they turn it in, then they'll get a percentage that to keep a percentage of their of their money. However, due to the signal, once if they haven't done that, then because their brain knows. That money was stolen, and it's illegal to use that money. They won't. They actually won't be able to physically be able to use the money, so it becomes worthless. Exactly. So the the idea that the government had with this amnesty program, they would be, rather have all this money back in circulation than it sit and rot, and you know, and then all of a sudden inflation goes up because like what happened? Like billions and billions of dollars are just gone. <laughs> yeah, it's it's wild now. Uh, that, going with that, I want to also add this is only in the United States. This is only in America this is happening. The rest of the world, they, they mentioned at some point, like, oh, like these countries have like said something, but they never actually say what, what the countries have commented. And they have mentioned that, first off, I don't know how this all got passed through Congress, because they said it took like, what, six months? Right, Lens? Six months! Six months for this to go in effect. I think I honestly think like that's the fastest I've ever heard of something going through Congress and being Bro, approved. That is you want to know why this movie is bullshit, because not only did they pass something this like nationwide in six months. Right. They also were able to like convince all of Congress, all of these like obvious human rights violations. <laughs> like you're you're brainwashing America. Like literally, it's not like it's not like um oh, what's the term? Uh gaslighting. It's, oh. <laughs> it's completely it's not it's not like that. It's legitimately using science and technology controlling the brains <laughs> of the public. <laughs> Literal brainwashing. But wait, it gets better because they they're during the, these six months, once it, like after it was approved, during the time that it was, uh, after it was approved, the time that they were setting it up, they made it illegal to leave the country. You couldn't what? leave the country until it was set up. Then, once the signal goes live, then they will let you try to leave the country. But good luck with that, because if the signal's in your brain, you're not going to make it to the airport. Because if you're trying to leave the country to get your illegal money, your signal's going to be like, oh shit, that's illegal. Uh, I can't make it to the airport. I'm stuck here. Now my money's useless. Yep. Just why? But why? even so, like, it, what's messed up is the fact that, like, all right, you're making it illegal to leave the country, but the circumstances could be various, right? It's not It's not only, like, criminals who have, like, illegal money that want to leave. It's people who are like, well, this sounds crazy. This is definitely a police state. What did you say? 
law enforcement has a chip in their brain that makes them immune to the signal so they don't that, actually have to follow like these rules. That too. What? They I don't want to live say, in a police state. I want to leave. <laughs> they blatantly say that in a news like broadcast that we see in the movie that oh police officers have always been held to a higher regard and they should you know they've known for a long time when it is necessary to use lethal force if it's necessary so for the police officers that still want to be a poli- you know an officer of the law they can implant this chip in their head so that the the signal does not work on them mind you they all uh the chief of the in city police station police department mm-hmm. Told if you remember, Lens told them all his un- all his officers that nationwide, probably about eighty percent of officers would be let go. What eighty percent? Because Word. because the the rest would be under military slash national guard jurisdiction for the whole country. Yeah, it's like a whole new branch of like national policing instead of like you know city or state police because. When you think about it, in in a world where crime is impossible, why do you need police, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So they would get rid of most police officers. And then what, what I'm confused about is that like, all right, so we're getting rid of all these police officers, but in this precinct, if we're gonna like, he, he said 80%. And now if we're going to take this precinct as an example of how what's going to happen across the country, right? Like a, a microcosm. Mm. Every single police officer just signed up and got the chip implanted. Right? So yeah. which police officers are being let go? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, for real, like, what do you mean? Like, what police officers are being let go? Because, like, they're... Oh, apparently that seminar that he was holding was going over, like... Th- what benefits they have because they were an officer and do this whole thing they're being let go so apparently officers were going to be taken care of quote unquote if you didn't want to get the chip and still work in this new crime free country they, they were getting everything they were getting medical dental vision i was like yo i mean yeah but like i also didn't see a single person not take the chip yeah <laughs> Yeah, there are mad people taking the chip because. So I was like, "What do you so, like?" Obviously, all these people can't be com- become part of the new program because you you just said like eighty percent of y'all are gone, right? So what eighty percent? So are these people just getting the chip and then not becoming officers and just becoming all powerful? Like what? What is what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> it's just it, it's it's crazy, and so all this is going on. And this is all in the background. This is the stuff that I can't believe. We're not Again. even talking about the actual plot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there is like a cop that we focus on in the movie. Sort of. A little bit. Not really. Uh, <laughs> that we're, we're supposed to, I guess, make a connection with this cop. Because they kind, of, they kind of I, the force fed time, him to us. The, you know what I mean? The whole time I'm like, what the fuck are you doing guy why are you here what do you this is none of your business <laughs> hell at the end when he showed up at the very end wh- what did he get the call for for what reason how does he get in there how does he have jurisdiction <laughs> also also the whole plan was contingent upon the fact that i i, I think as soon as it hit midnight, right? So the the signal goes live at midnight on this particular day. Yep. The whole plan was based on the fact that like all police officers at midnight have to turn in all their weapons. They have to show up. They have to like, you know, essentially give up power yeah. because the signal's live. Now, this guy was just chilling in his police cruiser, roaming the streets at midnight. Decked out. Decked out. Because it was after midnight, right? Because the signal went live, and then uh, the trick in the movie, like, shut it down. Yeah. Right? So why are you not... Where are you? Why are you rogue right now? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't uh, get it. We'll come back to this. We'll come back to this. So... Uh, we we went way off from the main characters. So. It's just it's just it's just so it just got me so tight. 
<laughs> so the main character reluctantly agrees to do this. Uh, now, what they're robbing from, if you've ever seen the movie Hurricane Heist, you know exactly what they're robbing. If you haven't, because of all the new influx of cash, whenever, and we do we do this too, that whenever we make new bills, we're not just adding to the current, you know, the bills that are out there, we get rid of older bills, you know, so that newer bills can take place. However, until they're destroyed, those bills are valid. That's what they're stealing. Yeah. The bills that are supposed to be destroyed, the money that's supposed to be gone by the end of the night, they're stealing that. And that's about a billion dollars worth. And the plan is we're gonna hit it, we're gonna hit the place. We're gonna hit the place. Signal's gonna go live while we're there. Chick's gonna uh down put the signal down for 30 minutes. We bust out with the money and we drive straight north to Canada. That's the plan. That's the plan. <laughs> now, if I may quote a a thief, a criminal of legendary proportions, a savant of his time, you would say, uh Captain Cold. <laughs> the way heists always work is you make the plan, you execute the plan, you expect the plan to go off the rails, and then you throw away the plan. <laughs> that is exactly what happens here. That is exactly what happens. The plan is made. The plan is executed. The plan goes off the rails, and then uh, the whole plan is just thrown out the window. <laughs> now, I want to say on paper, the plan's solid. On paper, the uh, plan is solid. I could argue that because, <laughs> all right. So originally, <laughs> he was like, "All right, so what's the plan?" He was like, "Steal the money, go to Canada, die rich." Mm. That was the plan. He whoa, whoa, succeeded. Whoa, 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 whoa. That hold on, hold on. Well, he succeeded. He did succeed. Technically. He, filled, he filled those requirements. <laughs> he filled every single one to the T. <laughs> <laughs> But like, like, so his plan, uh, it starts off with, uh, uh, first he needed five million dollars so that he can partake in the amnesty program, right? Which would get him access to the building in and which it could all be the money, fake money, as long as they looked and felt real. The only difference was, as the the chick who made them put it, the only way to tell that those bills were fake is if you burn them, because they would burn from a different ink, essentially. Yeah. So, he needed that money to partake in the amnesty program so that he can, like, get his way, you know, get the access. Cool. Also, I want to ask, what made the dude burn that, like, I have no, for, I have no reason whatsoever why he, he out of nowhere is just like, wait a minute, takes out a lighter, you know what I mean? Word, like, I guess, like, the tension was kind of high because, like, I don't know. They were talking shit to each other, like, in to, to each other's faces. Like, this is when, like, he was trading the money in for the amnesty program, right? Mm -hmm. And then he was just, like, as as the main character is, like, about to drive away, the guy's, like, he takes a $100 bill. He looks at it. He's, like, mm, you know what? I'm just going to burn this for no reason now. And then he sees the color and it's fake. He's, like, stop him. I'm, like, well, that, I don't know why you did that. See, now, if I were the if I were the main character, you're a criminal anyway, right? Mm -hmm. I would have gotten some extra money besides the fake ones, sprinkled it on top. So more than likely, they would he would have burnt a real one. Like, all right, cool, we're solid. <laughs> Just the top layer. Just like, top layer. Top layer is actual money, right? Yeah. You're about to be rich anyway, so it doesn't really matter. You can spend all your money here. So, and he'd probably pick it up, burn. Oh wow, it's real. Good shit. <laughs> <laughs> also, this amnesty trade-in fee that he got. So he comes in with like, I got five million dollars in cash, and I want to use for the amnesty program, or whatever. Lens, you want to tell them how much they were going to give him back for $5 million of stolen money? $350,000. <laughs> now, here's the thing. I'm sure that that was the rate that he gave him because he was A, being a dick, and B, because he didn't get his money white. from... Yeah, he didn't get his money from white-collar crimes. 
Yeah. You know, he, it's not like he was a Wall Street guy that like embezzled millions of dollars or like a guy who ran a pyramid scheme that like fucked over a thousand families. He just kind of like stole from a bank, right? Mm-hmm. I'm sure those guys, the white collar crime people, they were like, oh, like we're basically going to let you keep most of the money. <laughs> so, one thing I also want to point out about this movie, they specifically say, the way the signal works, and I don't know how this works, but specifically say that, that it only works when you can think about doing all the unlawful stuff you want. You can think about it all you want. That's no problem. But the moment you try to act on it, that's when the signal will start hurting you. And it's whenever you do an unlawful act. I want to well, highlight know, that part. Knowingly unlawful. So you got to know it's against the law. I don't think they said knowingly. I'm pretty sure they just they said did. unlawful. They did. I don't remember the knowingly. I only remember the unlawful act. I don't remember knowingly. It was, it was in it was in the uh, news broadcast thing. Mm-hmm. She was like, it was a lady. She was just like, uh, yeah, if you attempt to make a knowingly unlawful crime, because otherwise it'd be like, all right, let's say you didn't know what like jaywalking was illegal, right? You were just like walking across the street and all of a sudden you have a fucking seizure. <laughs> <laughs> Cause the signal's just like, ah, <laughs> you know? that's what, see, that's what I'm saying. All right. So going with that, knowingly unlawful act, right? So that means if it's legal crime, you're fine. <laughs> but what is legal crime? Well, I'm glad you asked that lens. One example of uh, of legal crime that was portrayed in the movie was this huge mafia family for the city. They were going to shut out all their businesses but become a credit firm, thereby giving credit cards to people who need them, say like farmers in the Midwest or whatever, in order to cover stuff, but with an outrageous interest like 25% or higher. And then that way when they can't pay it, the, those families are now legally obligated to hand over all their shit. Hey, that's not crime, though. <laughs> that's just America. <laughs> <True. Ba-da-ba-da-ba. laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I just pictured that that music video. This is America. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, he said, "Hey there, folks! Roll credits." Anyway. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so basically, if it's you can do immoral acts as long as it's not against the law. You yeah. could be a dick. You could be scum of the earth. But if the if it's not against the law, you're fine. Sure, so. like so, it's it's fine. Um, I'm trying to remember what we were. Oh, right, we were explaining like the steps of the of the heist. So after he gains access to the building, right, he has a plan. To get their way, get themselves to the vault room, right? Once in the vault room, he needs to use three charges. I forgot how he called what he called them, but essentially they were like explosives. They're yeah, like what do you mean by warheads? You know. So, from what I could tell, because the way the suitcase was set up, that was holding them, right? Mm-hmm. Is that it looked like there was three the three charges and then three other items, right? Mm-hmm. And the three other items looked like almost like cases for the charges. So my guess is that they were meant to be maybe like rocket charges or something like that that you would put into the cases so you could fire it that way because mm. Because remember, they only used three things. Like the other three things were in the suitcase were larger, different color, and they never touched them. <laughs> really? So, they didn't like combine them and like no? Nah, nah. They, they, they literally just took one out, gently put it on the door, and like twisted it to like set the the, the trigger or whatever. All right then. So uh he said that these were strong enough to take out a tank. So <laughs> plots was they were just RPGs. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so it was these three charges that they needed to destroy the bolts on the vault door. By the way, the guy who 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 like came to the main character for this heist is a fucking asshole. I hate him. I hate, <laughs> I hate him this dude. 
yo, how are you going to set charges, right? And then, like, he's like, okay, cool. How long should they, like, like, how long does it take to, like, go? And he's just like, oh, you know, like, 30 seconds, give or take. And they're armed. And he's like, oh, what? <laughs> and then, like, five, they, like, start running five seconds later. It explodes. <laughs> Set it. Oh, you're the worst. <laughs> it's just like, you good? Now-ish? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Now-ish? You know, we should probably be running right now. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, man, it's just... Yeah, so oh, no. um, they blow the vault door, and then uh, from the other side of the vault, which I don't I know how, really, by the way. <laughs> yeah, which I didn't really understand. So uh, they blow the vault door, they see the money inside, and then from the other side of the room, a truck appears. The f- I want to point out to vi- help visualize people. So you have the elevator on the south end, a room with some money, and then on the north end of the room is a vault. They blow open that vault door, go through it, and on the fur on the far end of the vault, even further north, is where a truck comes through. <laughs> so the truck is where they deposit the money from, because the like that's supposedly like the truck that like actually br- brings in the bills. Yeah. But my whole thing is, what's the point of the vault door if the other side is just open to, like, <laughs> vehicles? Like, also, what? I, I want to point out, what was the point of the vault door and blowing it up if you're going to come through the back end anyway? Exactly. Because it's not like they were prepping the money so they could just throw it into the truck. No, no, no. Remember, they needed a forklift for that anyway. So... Yeah. What was the point of trying to sneak in through the front door? Yeah, cause, well, they took the they used the forklift to drive it down that corridor that the guy came through, and then that led to the truck. But like the, like that was like wide open. Like he just like he took a forklift there. Yeah. Like what do you what what's happening here? I don't I do not understand. I would understand the guy doing the amnesty program in the front end as a distraction. I get that. But then there's no need for him to go to, to actually the vault. make it to the vault. And yeah, blow it open because the guy could just drive the money out of the vault without blowing it open and like making it really hot. <laughs> it's just like it made no sense. That whole part, that, that whole part of the plan made no sense. And I was like, okay, sure. So while all this is going on, you have the only female in the in the movie. Oh, I also want to point out we're only co- we're covering the heist portion, but that doesn't happen. How long is this movie again? Two and I a half hours. It. Two and a half hours. The the heist doesn't happen for like what? The last half hour? Yeah, it's two hours of talk and bullshit. Two and... two hours of yada yada yada. Yeah, actually, no, no, no. I want to say the the heist is actually the last forty five minutes to an hour because right. the it's like the heist, the standoff. The the double cross, the betray like yeah the double cross, the the like double double cross, and then like the escape to Canada. Yup, yup. It's just <sighs> anyway. So yes, they get the while, money while all this is happening. Yes, while the all this other is half of the plan, the most important part of the plan, probably. The I wouldn't chick, argue that. <laughs> I'd say definitely this important. Who's who's somehow the world's greatest hacker? Like she is the most beast hacker in this world. Uh, like she hacked the FBI. She hacked like the CIA. She hacked like the Department of Treasury or whatever. Like wild. So she makes it into the building where like the signal is being like controlled and all that. Mm. And she makes it there because like she seduces the guy who's in charge, like the software engineer or whatever Something engineer like that. Yeah. Yeah. So she, she seduces him, makes it in there, ties him up, goes into the server room, takes down the whole thing. Right. And then 
is chilling, right? Because she needs to make sure that like everything stays stays down. While she's there, the rogue cop. Oh my god, the rogue cop. It's past midnight. Don't know why you're still there. All geared up with a bulletproof vest, a full uh, full automatic rifle. Like I don't all know why this. you're all geared up. He goes into the building, and he he because he got a call saying like, "Oh, no, no." He goes to the building. Didn't get a call. He didn't get a call. He got a slight alert that someone who has a who has had a previous record is in this building, right? Is like, and this this is supposed to be an extremely secure building. So he looks at that and he's like, "Huh, that's suspicious. I better go check it out." Meanwhile, the people who were there, right, the security that was there was like, oh, hey, you have a record. You can't come in. And then the guy who she seduced waved her through. So, like, you would think that, like, there'd be no alert. You'd think that there'd be no alert because, like, the security there checked it out. Right. What what did you think? Like, the the security just didn't do their job. Like, what are you doing? That part made no sense whatsoever. It really didn't. So he can't. He comes through. He sees that like something's going wrong because like now the signal's down. He goes up. Yeah, excuse me. Hang on. Oh, I had to yawn there. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, he he saw, he sees the engineer tied up. He's like, "Yo, what's going on?" And he's he's like, "She she's doing a thing. She's dangerous." And then he finds her. A fight ensues. He like. Tries to kill her? Well, tries to arrest her at first, and then eventually, you know, because he know he can clearly see how dangerous she is as she's just trying to escape, that he has to strangle her. Yeah. So and I, I'm I'm you. giving a look right now. You can't see the look on my face. <laughs> but I'm giving this look because yes, this woman who's literally just trying to run away and leave. Needs to be strangled. Yep. Because that's uh, the appropriate amount of force. Mind you, this whole time, the signal went back up. Because I guess the people in the control room figured shit out and were able to like fix things. So the signal's back up. So the, the team, I think they're in the vault at this time. They need the signal to go back down. Because they're about to get wrecked. Because <laughs> if you if you stay if you keep doing things that are unlawful for a long no, wait, time. No way. Are you talking about when when they're put, switching the, the tr- money in the trucks? Yes. When the signal goes live again is what you're talking about, right? Yeah, live and, and again. Yeah, yeah, that they weren't in the vault anymore. They had left. Oh, they, oh, they already left. They had already uh... left. <laughs> Because that was a bigger truck that they found that they were going to put all the money in. That's true. Okay, so th- there's so many pieces to this. She uh, takes the signal down. It all works out. They they take the money out and go to go off to the switch where where they're going to like put all the money together and then like they're going to head from there to Canada. That's the that's the plan. While oh, they're there, Canada. Yeah, while they're there. The 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 douchebag that like the that got the main character into this. It's time for the double cross. He shoots his friend, and then starts like fucking with him. You know, while the signal's on. But wait, how can he do this, Lens? It's clearly and it's a knowingly illegal act he's conducting, and or that he's you know shooting and trying to kill people. Long story short, Deus Ex Machina. <laughs> <laughs> so it's at this point in the movie that we that we find out that the guy who um got the main character into all of this earlier we find out that he's the son of a crime lord that like wanted the main character dead but you know the crime lord all water. The main character did <laughs> yeah the crime lord did that's all water in the ridge because like that guy killed his dad. So like, whatever. Um, he, uh, tells the main character like, Oh, by the way, your brother didn't, uh, wasn't killed by guards. 
So what had happened was see the, what had happened was <laughs> so every like Friday or something, they like do cage fights and like I was up against your brother and like they would do this like while the signal's on. Oh, so, it like, wasn't cage fights, it was just the two of them. Cause uh, they signed up for it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. For like extra like extra something. like uh ex- extra privileges extra privileges like uh better food longer hours in the yard kind of thing so yeah yeah, yeah. so they would they would like put them they put them against each other with the signal going on right and they're like yo fight to the death they're like uh okay but it's hard because the signal's on so like you're trying to fight and like your your brain's melting because that's unlawful and all this stuff so apparently this guy because he kept doing it got used to the signal and then apparently by his words he realized nothing really mattered so therefore i can just do whatever i want and now the signal doesn't affect him and he can just like break the law and then he killed his brother so what we think really happened is that they they essentially he essentially just grew a tolerance for the signal, so his brain just shut down the part, of the small portion, I guess, that was affected by the signal, or, or something like that. I guess just that's imp- our imp- theory. That's improvise, what I adapt, think. overcome. <laughs> yeah, not like some moral, like oh, I don't think anything matters, so like whatever, because it's not like by by definition, right? What the signal does. It's not a moral thing, right? So, for example, I think that it that marijuana should be legal, right? But it's It's illegal, right? At the moment, it's not illegal. Morally, if I partake, I don't think I'm in the wrong. But under this law, I would get bodied, (laughs) right? (laughs) So it doesn't necessarily like matter about morals, right? So like the whole idea of like oh, nothing really matters. That doesn't explain anything. It's just... What do you mean? Nothing? <sighs> it made no sense. It made no sense. It was pretty silly. So, I, I tried to ignore that part because, like, that's just... I, was, I, uh, I couldn't. I harped so, on it. <laughs> so, I think that, like, he just got used to the signal and then, you know, he's just fine now. He's just He's just has signal immunity so he's torturing this guy he's telling the whole story i killed the brother ha 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 meanwhile the chick is fighting the cop signals on she's struggling because she's like she's trying to do things in self-defense which is fine right like she can like push him she can like punch him like she wasn't even punching him from what i remember she literally just tried to push him off and then just dip go for the door every time well kind of there was like one time when like she spun real quick i think she elbowed him a little bit but like that was kind of just like her trying to fend for herself so it's was, it's was not really like she's in a clear but yeah. like when he was down on the floor like she picked up a broken piece of glass because he like checked her through a glass table dude yeah that was ridiculous ridiculous <laughs> i was like that's unnecessary dude where are your handcuffs just like slap those on and walk away like <laughs> oh my god doing? anyway so she like picks up a broken like shard of glass and like goes for the kill and then like she's like gets stopped and like drops it and all this stuff uh it was pretty ridiculous so at one point he has her on a different table, not a glass table, because that one's broken. Mm-hmm. And he's strangling her. <clears throat> and I'm like, dude, like, what the fuck? Full on strangling. Like, he's mounted on her, both, both hands both on hands. her throat. Yeah, like, and at this point, I'm like, oh, yeah, he's trying to kill her. She, like, struggles and then, like, twists and shoves him a little bit. So they both kind of roll off the table. And somehow, perfectly, this glass shard is, like, pointed straight up. Was it a glass so, shard? I thought it was a rock. Nah, it was a glass. Because he got, oh like, stabbed. God. So, like, he rolls off the table and, like, gets impaled in the neck 
by like a big old piece of glass. So he dies. She's in the clear because like gravity killed him. She didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I did nothing. The pavement was his enemy. <laughs> uh. so, that was ridiculous, right? So, mind you, signal's still on. She's trying to get out of there. But now she can. Because the cop's dead. Now she can. I'll get back to what she does in a second. Let's go back to the standoff. The guy's being tortured, right? Because by by douchebag, the Gillicuddy over here. Douchebag ends up point blank shooting him in the gut with, with a, a shotgun. shotgun. At this point, I'm like, yo, this guy's dead. Like he's like he can't do anything after this. So the main character is like, I think he says some witty line at the end because he sees what's coming. The FBI was tracking this douchebag guy the whole time. That's all they would, they, they just wanted to kill him. Cause like, I don't know why they wanted to kill him. I don't think they ever actually really covered why they wanted to kill him. Yeah. They didn't really cover that because like he was the son of the crime Lord. Right. I think maybe the FBI knew that he had like an immunity because they weren't surprised when like the signal was on and like, he just kind of shot the guy. Yeah. True. Like, true. I think I think maybe they were like, this guy's too powerful. We need to to take him out. So he gets sniped <laughs> in the back of the head. Well, first he gets sniped multiple times first. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, like arms, like legs, shit. Yeah. By the way, if you're wondering, well, how did the FBI know that they were gonna be there? I thought they successfully pulled off the heist. The uh, the double the, double cross, <laughs> the double double cross. The chick in the group, the main character found this out early. By the way, the chick in the group was actually working for the FBI, and her job was to get in good with douchebag over here so that they can take him down. That was the whole plan. So, the main character finds this out, finds this out, understands the situation. He's like, I right, bet, cool, whatever. Like, I'll handle it when it gets to that point. And, yeah, so FBI shoots and kills that guy. And then they come up, walk into to the main character. And they're like, mm, you look like shit. And he's like, well, fuck you, too. <laughs> and he's like, you know what? You're going to die anyway. I'm not going to waste a bullet. And then they, like, walk away. Well, then they also say they're going to go find that girl now, the chick. Oh, yeah. He, like, oh, we're gonna treat like, her gonna, so nice. Blah, he's like, blah, are you going to keep blah. your promise? And he's just like, you know, I'm not going to keep that fucking promise. The promise was that she helps her out. Uh, he, She helps the FBI out. Then she can just leave, go to Canada with her sister, which is the only reason that she was helping out the FBI in the first place, because they kidnapped her sister. Um, and, you know, they'll be good. They, they, they'll leave her alone, and she could just live her life. FBI dudes are like, all right, cool. So we're going to go and we're going to kill that chick now. I'm pretty sure that the the white dude was going to rape her because he just gave up. He gave off that vibe. It was pretty rapey. Rapey vibes. Rapey vibes. Rapey vibes. Um, and then they were definitely going to go find the sister and like do the same to her. So, yeah, they were not very good people. Nope. So... In the very beginning of the movie, like probably like the second scene, the main character buys this drug off of this guy. It's a neurotoxin. The guy says it destroys your brain and like, but it gives you like a really good high. <laughs> like, I don't know why you would have this thing, but I think he just wanted to kill himself. I think yeah. I'm not totally well, sure. I, I honestly think that he was it was a trump card because they they talked about trying to beat the system, the signal, right? But that was after he had already bought it. No, that was after. But like he found out like you can't really beat the signal. The only way is to take down the signal or to destroy the brain. Pretty much. You have to they said that Someone could suffer enough damage. You could damage enough of the brain in order to make yourself immune to the signal. But the amount that you would have to damage, you'd probably end up dead. 
Yeah, you're just gonna you're probably gonna die. So he's like, Well, I'm gonna die anyway, because this gunshot, like the shotgun wound to my stomach. He takes the neurotoxin. It slowly destroys the brain. So as it's destroying the brain, he's not affected by the signal anymore. So he picks up his brolic fucking magnum <laughs> and just emphasis on brolic. Brolic. This is a stupidly brolic magnum. He kills the two FBI agents that were in the car because they were about to drive away. And he's like, I bet. Then he gets into the truck. I thought he was going to drop dead at this point. He gets into the truck because he knows that the chick is in danger. He starts driving. Now, back to the lady. Mind you, he still has buckshot in his gut. He does. He took a 12 gauge. We'll get back to that. (laughs) Going back to the lady. She is still in the building. She just got rid of the cop dude because he killed himself, technically, right? She goes back into the server room where the signal's, like, you know, being controlled. She sets a charge. Yep. Like, I don't understand how she does this. The signal's up. She sets a charge. An explosive. Highly illegal. Walks away detonates it or is it on a timer i don't i don't know either way it blows up the server and the signal goes down how did she do this well lens it's not illegal to pick stuff up and put it down <laughs> it's illegal to set a charge her but what if she didn't know it was an explosive lens really <laughs> I'm just, that will not hold up in court <laughs> <laughs> So she blows up the server and like the signal goes down. I want to point out why did they do that in the first place if they're gonna do that anyway? Right? <laughs> what why do this convoluted 30 minute bullshit thing if you could just blow up the server? You blow up the and server, they're not they're not gonna get up and running in 30 minutes. <laughs> word. It's not gonna be up and running. <clears throat> Secondly, they're not gonna go to the vault. They're not going to go there. They're going to go to where the server blew up. They're going to be like, okay, people are trying to attack the tower. Like, that's where all the forces are going to go. So you're you're just leaving. You're, you're honestly given, like, a, a open space to, like, steal all that money. It's a better distraction. Whatever. So she starts walking away. And then, like, the security is like, ma'am, stop. And she just keeps walking. And a whole bunch of, like, four or five, like, security guys with guns like come up and like they're behind her she's like stop moving uh and then like i think that it was she was just i don't know how she knew or if she knew or i don't understand this part but essentially she lines them all up at the front of the building and she's about to get shot and then here comes the dude with the truck and she he just like barrels through all of them so yeah he saved her how did how did she know that he was gonna be there? How did he know that she was in trouble for like like that? I I don't know. It just worked out. She gets in the truck. They like share a moment, and then they drive to Canada, and then it just it just. He's he's still bleeding. <laughs> he still has. He should be dead. Whole time, he, not only is he dealing with a shotgun wound to the fucking gut, he should be he should be dead. It was like gut and chest. If it was gut, I can understand. Like if you get shot in the gut, it could be a slow death. But it was like gut and chest. Here's the thing: I can understand maybe a slow death of gu- taking a shot to the gut from a single bullet. <laughs> <laughs> this is buckshot. <laughs> It there is no shot. midsection no more. You have no organs. Your <laughs> organs are probably falling out, going, and you're going like, oh no, please stay in your home. Daddy needs you. Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my so, god. So on top of all, of all of that, he his brain's destroyed. Like he he took a neurotoxin. It's his like brain is cooking. It's cooking. on simmer. Like <laughs> the fuck like i don't understand any of it but anyway he's he's in the truck and he starts driving to canada and he has to make it through the border and the border is obviously protected on both sides 
Mm-hmm. And they're shooting at the truck, and he's just like barreling through. Doesn't. I want to point out there was a sign that said, "I think like Welcome to Canada, Land of Freedom" or something like that. <laughs> it was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> that was dope. Uh, but yeah, so he drives, makes it all the way to Canada, makes it to some port in in Canada. I don't know, like how, probably like all the way to Toronto, <laughs> and and then. He decides, after all of that, he decides he's going to croak. Yeah. She's sad because she loves him, and then she takes some money and then walks away. And then, like, all the cops show up after that. Yep. I don't... I don't understand. We, We... Like, here's the thing. I'm not going over anything that happened before the heist because all of that was just ridiculous. It was just unnecessary and convoluted and annoying. The heist itself (coughs) was annoying and convoluted. (laughs) Again, there was just extra steps you didn't need. Oh my god, this is... And then... The movie ends with the chick meeting up with her sister. And they're both alive in Canada now, I guess. Sure. Yep. Whatevs. But, so, like, where do I start? (laughs) I went in thinking this movie was going to be fire from the premise alone. Because it sounded dope. That, and, that's a fire premise. It's and like that premise the, the, even movie. even the trailer slash commercial, it kept showing the main character and about it and talking and like kind of showing like oh he talking about like he's gonna be you know the main figurehead of the heist and the, kind of make it seem like this is his idea and he's only doing it just to prove a point. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's not at all what the movie was about. I got lied to. I got absolutely oh, lied to. Man. It's just. Man, don't watch it. Just don't do it to yourself. It's it's a waste of time. I I'm extremely disappointed. This could the movie could have been really dope. It was really long. Like it was really usually, long. Here's the thing. Usually, I feel like long movies merit their length. When the movies two and a half hours, they're like, well, we gotta show you something. We gotta do something to earn those two and two and a half hours, right? Nope. Not at all. It was not just, at all. It was just annoying. <sighs> I don't know, man. It's just why, you know what I mean? Why? So if uh, if anybody's wondering um, about these ratings for this movie, I don't know why I didn't check the ratings beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> because we were sold on the premise. I, I word I really, but we really should have. We really should have, because had we seen the ratings, we probably would have been like, you know what? Nah. <laughs> so, on Rotten Tomato, what do you want first, the the critic score or the audience score? No, no, no. Give them the audience score, because that's always the higher score. <laughs> uh, not often. Like, uh, really? I no, sorry. I mean, let me... like, Take a look at Mulan. Like, all right, let me phrase that. Is way higher. Whenever the critic score is low, I feel like they're always not in in unison. Whenever critics rate it low, I feel like the audience rates it higher. And when the critics rate it high, I like super high. I think the audience rates it lower. <laughs> That's true. That's usually like what happens. So, audience score twenty four percent. Twenty four percent. It's bad. Twenty audience score twenty four percent. I'm going to say it one more time. 24% out of 100. <laughs> Critic score, zero. Flat zero. Like, zero. Like, absolutely garbage. Straight like Straight up zero. Straight up zero. Not a single redeeming quality. Like, I don't know what you want me to say. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just... Oh just... God, just... Why? Why? Why would you like do this to me? Like, just waste my fucking time like this. You know what's funny? What? 
So that director, you you know you want to know how high is his high, high highest rated movie? Oh no. His highest rated movie is thirty nine percent. Jesus. Thirty nine percent. And that's Transporter Three. <sighs> I wasn't a fan of Transporter 3. I don't know about you, but... I didn't watch Transporter 3. <laughs> oh, there you go, all right? Dude, Just... like... How do you keep getting work? <laughs> 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 like, it's a lot of bad movies here, bro. Transporter 3, Columbiana, Taken 2, Taken 3. Like... My guy. I mean, Colombiana wasn't terrible. It wasn't great. It wasn't terrible, in my opinion. But yeah, how do you keep it work, man? I don't know, bro. I don't know. I... I don't know. <laughs> That's like... Like, wow. <laughs> Like, I kind of feel bad because, like, like after a while, it's kind of like, I don't, I don't want to, like, shit on the same guy all the time, but, like, he keeps making bad shit. Like, I don't know what to say. I, I have no words. I just have none. Like, I just... <sighs> I Somebody has something that, that can like wash the taste out of my mouth. <laughs> like I'd I'd greatly appreciate it. I'm looking for something new. Like a, a new movie or anything? A movie in particular, because like, you know, I got series, that's fine. But I need I need a solid two and a half hour movie to replace this two hour two and a half hour movie. Fair. Fair. Oh my god. Well, Lens, we just gotta wait for the Schneider cut. I am I'm, I'm excited, man. I, I don't know. Like I, I'm nervous. I'm excited. We'll see what happens, but bro, they doubled the length of the movie. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like a, a lot can happen. When you double the length of a movie, like a lot can happen. It could go from garbage to amazing. So yeah, I just hope it's amazing. I just... Uh, <laughs> but I think that's enough ragging on the movie. Uh, I don't recommend it. I really don't. Um, those are my final thoughts on this movie. Any other final thoughts from you, Lens? No, I think I've said all I needed to say. All right. As always, thank you for listening to us rant and ramble incoherently like a couple of old men. Um, you can <laughs> you can follow the channel on the underscore content corner on Instagram and Twitter, all lowercase. Same thing. You can now follow our YouTube channel where we'll be uploading all new podcasts. And if you guys uh, if you guys prefer as well. We'll probably be uploading some of our streams there too, in case, say it's like a good stream, well, or like something memorable happens. Maybe some clips from the streams. You know, we'll put that up there too. Like that last on-stream dub we gave you guys. That <laughs> said it would happen, and it did. <laughs> so yeah, and then if you want to uh, get in contact with us, in order to ask us to you know discuss something, something you want to hear our thoughts on, or or just you know ask us to check out or something you just want to recommend to us that you think we'll enjoy. That's you can hit us up at content corner mail at gmail.com all lowercase, all one word. And that's about it for me. So on that note, hope we hear from you guys and thanks for tuning in. Deuces. Bye.